my legendary children, my name is Ethan and welcome back to my mental breakdown. How we doing? How we feeling? What's our truth today? My truth is that I'm in the studio! And I've finally gotten my studio to a place where I'm happy with it. Like in the sense of how it's laid out and how it's decorated. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a little tour of my workspace. Some of the things that I like to use and how I design my space to fit my needs and my workflow. I'm also gonna show you some of the basic things that you're gonna need to start your own little home studio. And I'm gonna show you things that you can do for little to no cost to make you a better producer and a better artist. Hi, quick little disclaimer. Don't be f***ing rude! Don't be f***ing rude! By no means am I claiming to know everything there is to know about studios and recording and whatnot. Nor am I telling you that this is the only one right way to do any of this. These are just the things that work for me. These are some things that I've heard from professionals in the industry. And if you think what I'm saying is a crock of sh that's okay! And if you feel the need to add your two cents in on that, leave a comment below. But before you post it, copy and paste it into an email and send it to your therapist. Because you have bigger issues than critiquing some f on YouTube. So, what is a recording studio? If you strip it down to its bare bones, pretty much a computer, a microphone, some sort of interface to connect said microphone to said computer, at least a pair of headphones, preferably some speakers, better yet both, maybe a MIDI controller, and like some cables and stuff. Invest in all of that stuff, you have a basic little recording studio. Now, I could go on about microphones and computers, amps and hardware and something, but that's not the point of this video. These are the basic things you need to start recording your little songs. But if you are concerned about plugins and stuff like that, if you get a good digital workstation like Logic or Pro Tools or whatever, they always come with some really, really great stock plugins. I use a lot of stock plugins still to this day. Because they're great and you don't have to pay extra for them. But what's the point in having all of the- Okay, that was stupid. Ow! Ow! I'm pulling my f***ing hair! But what's the point in having all of this gear if you have nowhere to organize it? Come on, let me show you. You coming? <laughs> Popeye, how you doing? So this is my dresser. And what do we think it's filled with, kids? It's actually mostly just cables and stuff. So many cables. Look like at all these cables. Look at all those chickens. I just dropped the metal part of my foot. Sometimes I look in your eyes and that's when I finally bust a nut. But my mom got this dresser from a lady on Facebook Marketplace. And when she went to pick it up, I made her take my taser. And how could we forget the guitar gallery? These are just the guitars we use most often and the ones that look the nicest. They fit the color palette. <gasps> they go with the color story. Color story, that's my drag name. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, color story. I I recorded most of It's Been Rough, like the album as a whole, on this Telecaster. Pretty much all of the bass parts were on this Fender Jazz bass. And I got this Epiphone Les Paul when I was like 8 and almost 14 years later and I still don't know how to play it. I could do nothing of the sort. The lie detector test determined that was a lie. So I think it's really important to keep a clean and organized space that's also visually appealing and looks nice. Because organization is great for productivity and also having a room that you like and you think looks good will make you want to be in it. So that's why I have all the guitars on the wall and the artwork hanging on and the plants the tapestries on the wall that are covering a lot of loose wires and foam on the wall that doesn't really look that nice and it adds a little bit of color to this very green and black and brown room. This room also often doubles as a guest room in my house so having just like everywhere wires all over the place is not really gonna work. <coughs> Hi. This is the guitar amps with quite a variety because you know that's how that's how we do it around here. It's every day, bro. <laughs> Come on, Jake Pollard. <laughs> Everything is pretty much plug and play with all of the wires hidden behind so it looks nice and I don't trip and fall and die and have to come back and haunt you guys because even in death you're not getting rid of me. I will upload on this channel from the afterlife, you mark my words. Actually, I think YouTube is my purgatory. What the f But like I said, everything is plug and play. I don't want to be farting around setting it up every time I want to come in here and work. Like, what's that? What is that? We're not doing that. We don't have time for that. I got stuff going on. Stuff that you don't know about. I think this little Fender Super Champ is my favorite. There's a great chorus effect on it. And everybody knows that I love chorus on guitars or just on anything really. I also really like this little amp. Oh, no. I also really like this little amp peg. I use it a lot and I record direct input from it. It's a really good like starter processor, if that makes sense. As opposed to like just recording a raw sound. Anyway, so now let's talk about your space itself. Choosing the right space and properly treating it is really important to getting good recordings and mixes. And soundproofing isn't always necessary. I mean, it's cool. Basic treatment of a room is all you need. I'm assuming Assuming that a lot of you watching this are gonna be making little studios in your bedroom or in like an extra room in your house, which has furniture, a bed, maybe a couch, a closet full of clothes, lots of stuff to absorb extra sound and keep the room sounding pretty dry. If you're doing it somewhere like a garage where there's lots of open space with surfaces for sound to bounce off of, you're gonna have a lot 
more to do in a space like that. But instead of investing a fortune on Arlex or other types of soundproofing materials, unless you're a lucky little like me, where my dad found a bunch of boxes of foam at where he works and he was allowed to take it home, go get some moving blankets, some insulation, some pillows, some old quilts. Put them on the walls, put them on the floor, put them on the ceiling, hang them up, make your own little sound booth. There's actually this video of me somewhere with this like ghetto ass vocal booth that I made. It was literally just like moving blankets hung up on my loft bed. <laughs> Closets work great as a little vocal booth. But like, <laughs> Come here. but like this is your mic. This is a, uh, this is a Sterling Audio ribbon mic. But you put this in your closet, put some like pillows and blankets and stuff around it. And that's a perfect little vocal booth. So bed, good. Couch, good. Carpet, good. Drop ceiling, good. Big open space with lots of echoes, bad. <laughs> So this is my little workstation. My keyboard's over H-E-A-R here. Again, everything's plug and play, ready to go. I use my Korg mini log quite often. And I'll record sounds from it. Uh, what are from it? Yes, what are from it? A lot of the sounds on my first album. That like main synth in Without You. The main synth in Better Apart. And I think the <laughs> That one part in Wild. I think that's from this. But this is my M- did not know that was on. <laughs> Why are we damn it up in here? You're ugly, you're disgusting, I'm gonna kill you, give me $200. But this is my MX-49. I don't use it nearly enough. I don't think I've ever recorded a sound from it. That's not true. I think the drums from Better Report are from that. I'm falling apart. I should record more sounds from it. There are some presets directly from the DX7 on this keyboard. And everybody knows that's totally my vibe. Tightly my vibe vibe. Tightly my vibe. But I have quite a few speakers. Or monitors, whatever you want to call them. You call them whatever you say they And don't ever let anybody take that away from you. <laughs> but I like to have different references while I'm mixing. And I can put them on all at the same time and make it really, really loud. <laughs> that's something that never escapes us. The whole energy of like, parents aren't home, gotta, gotta play the music super, super loud. As loud as it can possibly go. Then I have my iMac, I have my MIDI controller. She's about as slow as my last is in January. What is this character? What is this voice? Who is this person? Who is she? I want to know. So many questions. <laughs> Over here we have the floor couch. Floor couch, floor couch, floor couch. That's actually the unreleased bonus track on Harry's house. <laughs> this actually used to be a futon before the support beam snapped under my thick, voluptuous, juicy. But this is the comfy corner. Come on down to the comfy corner. Hi, I don't know why, but this is giving me same energy as the curly crab. The creepy crab. Sorry, I just thought that was funny. This is here because this room also often doubles as a guest room. But also because it's really important to have a comfortable space to work in. Not just for yourself, but anyone who you may be working with. Writing music is draining, it's intimate, it's time consuming. And having a space where everybody can feel comfortable is really important. So if we move over this way a little bit. Hold on, let me let me repo the camera. <laughs> this is a terrible angle, but we're gonna roll with it. This is my little vocal booth. Vocal booth. And it does a really great job of isolating the sound and getting a nice crisp vocal recording. I feel like I know somebody who hates the word crisp. And then right next to it, I have this little bookshelf with some books, some plants, some stuff to make tea. Lots of fresh tea. Which helps make this place cozy and homey and inviting. Oh yeah. Did you guys hear that? And that concludes this. Is this a cool angle? Do you like this angle? That concludes this really chaotic studio tour. I'm so sorry. Ha 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 Well, that's the end of our journey here, folks. That's all, folks. I know that was a lot of information to throw at you at once. And if you have any specific questions, please leave them in the comments below or DM me on Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. All the links to my own music are in the description below. And I will see you in the next one. Cool. That was fun.